It's 20 Max for 2020. Number 16 is the blue and white G3. Steven, what is going on over there? I have my blue and white G3. Are you... Give it a hug. I love this You're computer. giving it a hug? You, you, yeah. It's lovable. It so, is. So it answers the question. I know you like the, the G3 IMAX, which you know mm-hmm. famously brought color and translucent plastic back to a grateful nation and world. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and so many objects were full of translucent blue plastic after the yeah. came out. But it defined a whole era. But Jonathan Ive and Steve Jobs said, you know what? What if we made a professional desktop computer that also looked like a an iMac? And that's the blue and white G3, which replaced what I would argue is the most beige of computers ever made, which was the Power Mac G3 uh, that preceded it. They both have the same name, so we refer to one as the beige G3 and one as the blue and white G3. But like the difference between those two models, that's why it's on my list, is that this is the beginning of like a whole new era, and it couldn't be a starker difference from the beige G3 that came before it. Yeah, it, it was approachable. We've got these handles. We have a door that opens, so you can update all your stuff, which is really cool. Yeah, you could you could lift off the door on the beige G3, but this one it just it 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 hinges down, so you can just lay it flat while while the computer's still running. By the way, which is always a daredevil kind of thing to do. Stick a pipe cleaner and a fan, uh, but this also so this did bring the design elements of the iMac to the professional landscape, but it also brought Apple's new way of making Mac. So on the back of this computer, we have USB, which showed up on the iMac. This was the introduction of FireWire, which would then make it back to the iMac a little bit later. Um, And there's one ADB port, which was Apple's old style connector for things like keyboards and mice. But there's no SCSI or anything. They had add-on cards. It was, keep in mind, Pro Mac without SCSI in this era was a big thing. Now, you could just get a SCSI card for it. But it was also Apple sending the signal like... We're out. We're not going to make. We're not going to put SCSI on Max anymore. Get you know. Get ready for a change, and and yeah, a lot of a lot of the press at the time was like, well, you, now you have to buy a SCSI card. And it's like, yeah, or or start migrating away from SCSI because people don't want to use it anymore. So this machine helped bring the sort of power line, you know, desktop line power users into this new era, and within a few years, everything was USB or FireWire, and the world moved on. That's what what things do. But this machine was a big change. The the iMac is often heralded as changing the way the Mac was. But this thing deserves, I think, just as much credit because it changed the way Macs were used in the workplace. Yeah, the core of the Mac install base in this era was pro people with Power Macs. And Power Macs back then didn't, they weren't like Power Macs today, where they're very, very high end. Sort of, uh, the iMac in this era was viewed by most of the people who were existing Mac users as kind of a joke because it was underpowered. The original iMac especially, it was very slow and then it didn't have any compatibility and a lot of these people were pro users. They had cards and stuff like that. So the moment when the sensibility of the iMac came to the Power Mac, that was the moment that I would say most longtime Mac users first experienced what the future of the Mac under Jobs and Ive was going to be. And it was, you know, it was breaking compatibility with a lot of old stuff. It had some technical differences on the inside. Uh, I think it was the first to have uh, not ROM in a chip, but in, in you know, ROM that, that was loadable off of a disc. So it was like, there are lots of things they were making changes to. And, and it was bright blue and plastic, which, you know, I think there was some controversy about that from very serious people who didn't want a bright, colorful computer in their offices. Um, and to, to be fair, the G4s that followed, which were essentially the same design as this G3, were gray, so I guess yeah, Apple they, decided they to back off. They yeah, they backed off a mm-hmm. little bit, but uh, yeah. but that one's so much fun, and it's got the G3 silk screen on the metal underneath the translucent plastic that you can see oh, yeah. through it. Okay. See, mine is more contrasty. Uh, I had this machine in college, and I took the panels off and did the G3 paint them black. So usually they're like a dark gray, so mine are even more visible. Well, that was you, really cool in school. You can you can like stencil on. Stephen was here now. Or Steven's Mac. That's right. Steven's G3. That's Just right. Just put it right above, like in with a paintbrush, like Steven's. Yeah. Steven's G3. Yeah, but but a cool machine and one that introduced a lot of stuff to a lot of people. And it definitely has my affection. 
Yeah. And and it, it lasted because it went through all those G4 iterations that I would argue maybe got progressively worse because they needed to cool more and they get louder and the fans were weirder. And they started doing like mirrored drive doors and like big, like beveled, like scalloped uh, air intakes in the front. And I think they got kind of gross at the end. But the the blue and white G3 and that first G4 are, are like they're pure. They're, they're I like them. I like them a lot. Me too. All right, we salute the blue and white G3 as part of 20 Max for 2020.